afternoon, good evening to our global Nimble community. My name is John Ferrara, the CEO of Nimble, and today is one of those special days. Um, there's uh, my dear friend, Brian Kramer. Brian, say hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. You I bet. really appreciate it. So as I started to use social media in 2008, 9, and 10, I started to swim in the river and to interact with people by sharing content that inspired and educated me, hopefully to inspire and educate others. And there's one person that stood out from that, uh, in, in that river, uh, this, this fish called Brian Kramer. And, uh, and Brian, you started inspiring me in early days with your words. And as you grew your marketing agency and then evolved from that into being really a uh, an inspiration coach to help people achieve their dreams. And I think that's why we're on this planet is to grow our soul by helping other people grow. And I think that the organization, the eight states community that you build is, uh, is really an inspiration to all of us that you've transformed your business where you don't have this organization around you that, um, that holds you back, that enables you now to be free to really scale other people. And that's why I invited you here to share some of your wisdom and journey on how you transformed yourself, your family into the dreams that you envision to free up your heart and soul. So mm -hmm. Brian, take us away. Hey, thanks, John. And John, uh, you are um, just one of my favorite human beings. So the sim simple, uh, fact that you just invited me here to be uh, just a part of your company and a part of your community means a lot to me. And I think you know that, but I just want to say that out loud um, from my heart to yours. So thank you. Right, right back at uh, you, buddy. I'm going to I'm gonna shut my camera off. Before I close out, I'm going to be in the background compiling questions and answering those that I can. And we're going to be uh, interacting at the end with those questions. Please, please, please ask questions because that's how we all learn. All right, Brian. You got the ball. Cheers, buddy. Yeah. So, um, what what John was referring to was uh, that uh, it wasn't just it was a little over four years ago that my wife and I, Courtney, owned. Um, uh, well, we had several companies. Um, one of which was uh, Pure Matter, and Pure Matter was a uh, marketing agency. It was a small but mighty agency. You might consider it. Some would consider it big. Some would consider it small. Uh, it depends how you look at it. We were 30 people. Um, we consider it small but mighty because we were uh, playing it with the big fish uh, in a lot of ways. We were working with uh, really nice companies. I would uh, playing some really fun projects, um, Netflix and Cisco and MasterCard and IBM. We did some really cool things. Uh, it took a lot to get there over 22 years. Uh, it, it, we, we started it uh, the same year that we were actually uh, had a, in, this, in the first year we started the business. We also uh, uh, had a child. We got married. We did all these things. Man, did we 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 did a lottery ticket, Courtney and I, and and we won. I think we won. We're still married today. Happy so happy together and um and, and we went through a lot we went through some ups and downs in business uh like everybody like you i'm sure and we learned a lot along the way and um and and i really enjoyed so many pieces especially the people uh part of what we did that was my favorite part I, if i have to have to say it there's so many people along the way uh that we got to meet and see and and learn from um, but at the end of uh, the journey of that first phase of what we went through is, is what I want to talk about because there was a point in there where I was traveling over 200 days a year. Um, I was speaking. Uh, I was, I was, it was a wonderful place because I was getting to enjoy so many different countries and speaking about my book, uh, H to H. There's no B2B or B2C. It's H to H, human to human. And it was a pure delight because I got to go through so many different countries and, you know, Italy and uh, France and you name it. I, oh my gosh, it was, I got meeting so many people and talking about what human to human really is, which we'll talk about here in a second and how that weaves into your company and how to build the company that, that will uh, make it easier on you um, and how to, how to really create that for you. But what happened to me is I was starting to, ta to detach from this company uh, that was, that had built uh, 
a, a great place for us. We are a $30 million company and, um, and I wasn't a part of the company. I was traveling so much that I had come home. Courtney was trying to run the company herself and we, what, we, what we learned is that um, we hadn't built the structure and the systems and the processes to uh, be able to support the two of us not being uh, in the, we, we were in the company, we weren't on the company, we we're working on the company. Um, my son, my, my 11 year old son actually sat me down. Uh, he pulled me by, by the hand and he sat me down and uh, pulled me up to his bedroom and he said to me, dad, um, you are never around. And he said, you're, you're just, uh, um, you know, you're, you're fat. And he's, he's right. I, I had eaten my way through every single country. It was good food. I mean, let's be honest. It is good food, but they just don't serve healthy food when you travel, or at least I didn't make good choices. And at the same time, he said, dad, you're diabetic. You just got told you're diabetic. I'm like, dude, you're 11. Where are you coming up with this stuff? And then he said, dad, I don't think you're going to live long enough to meet your grandkids at this rate. And I was in tears. I just was like, oh my God, he's so right. I'm beating myself to death, trying to do something that's just like, where am I heading with all of this? I'm losing the thing that's the most important, which is my family. I got to do something different. And so I went on, on a trip the next day, unfortunately, and I was in tears. I got done with my next keynote. I flew home and I said to Courtney, we got to change everything. Not you and me, but everything else. And we restructured the company. We restructured our processes. We retooled all of our, um, uh, our, 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 our structure of how we were so that we could then go on vacation and we could enjoy our lives without checking email and to be there. And I never from that point again missed a game with his sister and him and I and I stopped traveling. I took a year off and then we finally exited the company and I redid my life. I lost diabetes. I don't I don't register as a diabetic anymore and I lost 85 pounds. And I'm sitting here today telling you that you can have a company and you can live a life with ease and and you can scale your company without having to be in it. You can actually work on the company and have fun growing it. So that's what I want to talk about today. And I'm going to switch over to some slides and get off a video and show you how to do that and how to make that happen. And then we're going to have some fun with some questions to see if you have any questions about how to do that. Okay, so here we go. But excuse me here with the tech a little bit. I'm going to see if I can't transition over to that. Um, and uh, then we'll switch into the full screen mode. It's on the right. There it is. There we go. Everybody can see the title screen. We're good. You're still in slide mode. How is that? Mm, still there. Try going to view or slideshow. Try from the menu. For some reason, it's not switching. Hmm. Go from... The, from the text on the top, slideshow or view. To the right, slideshow, there you go. Play from start. Oh, uh, I think you might have, you might be in the note view there. Let's see here. See, we're having a human moment. Um, why don't I just go ahead and Click this, and then we'll reshare my screen real, real quickly. Um, and then um, I'll pull it back up for you. And then we'll get this this way. So go ahead, uh, if you don't mind, and um, we'll, we'll share my, um, we'll share hey, my Brian, PowerPoint. It's okay if it's in the slide mode, just, just expand your screen and uh, we're fine. Okay, that sounds good. You definitely want to go full screen on your slides. Let's see, where are you at? Can you see my screen now? No, I see your your camera. There you go. And how are Turn we doing now? Off. Okay, we'll just do it screen by screen. How's that? 
That's good. Okay. There we go. Is that large enough? Can you guys see it? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. All right. So um, let me just, we're, I love having these little blips because we're going to talk about actually imperfect moments. Um, and so uh, try hitting play from start again on the left. All right. Let me go to home slideshow and play from start. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, isn't that fun? <laughs> we need a Windows expert. I know. Well, this, <laughs> I'm on a I'm on a Mac, but I think. Uh, um, I'm just going to go ahead and see if you guys can um, see if I can get to the next slide here. Um, let me pull my my slides down one more time and reopen them for us and see if you can see this. We're having a human moment here. Yes, we are. <laughs> you yeah. could always uh, export that file out and open it up in Google Slides. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then let's share this one more time. Are you on the cloud version of PowerPoint or are you on the desktop version? Let's see, I'm in the window. So um, I'm in the window of, um, of the desktop. Okay. So now you should be able to see it if I just go screen by screen by screen. How's that? Perfect. So, um, and now you can see it, John? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay, I'll go screen by screen. Okay, so sorry about that, everybody. Thanks for bearing with me. And um, and so now we're gonna talk about a transition into how to grow your business with ease, which as you just discovered, a, a human moment, we um, have those same bumps in our business um, and, um, you know, I had to learn how to have that as I grew, um, not only my weight, and I had those same moments throughout my business. Um, and this is what our business looks like, and this is who we are. Um, I, I uh, would get on planes, I would get into business, we would all uh, share the struggles that we're having, we would get, uh, you know, in, in struggle with our finances, with our sales, with our, um, with our marketing with our operations with all of all of the ingredients that goes into what it is in building a business as you saw in the um in the the statistics that you shared a, a large part of it is sales and how do you create the sales that you need but then you have to fulfill those sales so it's like this infinite loop of taking things in and then making it work. And then what are the ingredients to make it work and then supporting those things and then back out, I need more sales again. And so uh, you're you're now having to figure out what are the forecasting, forecasts, how do I forecast how much sales I'm gonna need? But I can't really understand that if I don't know or I can't set a goal. Well, a goal is really not really a goal if it you don't know if it's gonna happen. Right. I mean, we are in a pandemic and all of a sudden the pandemic takes a right turn with an Omicron. I know I'm like sharing the truth here, but we know the truth is that things can just happen out of the blue. We have to plan a plan A, a plan B, a plan C and a plan D. Um, and so what do we do about that? Well, we plan for intention, not not a goal, because a goal can let us down. A goal can make it so that we actually uh, may not have that happen. I may plan for $2 million at the end of this year of completion. But if I intend on getting to, uh, my intention is to get to $2 million. And I intend to also look at my, my plans over quarter, over quarter, over quarter to see how I'm going to twist and turn and make that happen. And then here's the tools that are going to make that happen. And here's the people I need to make that happen. And I have the right templates to do that. I have the right structure to do that. Then we can, we can move the company as that's happening to make that happen as well. It's kind of like being on, um, being in a race race with a race car and you have that, that one car ahead and you're, you're following the car 
you know, it's the pace car and the car's going wherever you, the car goes, you go and you can follow the pace car and you know exactly where the car is going and then you can actually make that that race happen a little bit easier. Um, same concept. And so as we're doing that, we also want to understand where all the, the pieces are in your company. Where is everything happening? Uh, ironically, um, uh, and and um, and unfortunately, the animation here isn't working, so you won't be able to see the um, the piece. So let me see if I can bring it up forward. Um, the uh, yeah, I can bring the front. So um, let's see if I can do that here. Uh, what what happened here with Walt Disney? Ironically, we were talking about him earlier. Walt Disney created on a napkin um, in 1980. Uh, 1957, he created all of the human touch points, the human touch points where everything was going to happen for his company before it ever happened. Meaning like he knew that in Disneyland, everybody was going to walk through the tunnels that worked at Disneyland, all the characters or the actors as they call them, not the employees, that were going to walk under the tunnels as they as they quit their day at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day so that no one ever saw them. Every little human touch point that everyone was going to interact with was built into this napkin that he drew. You, you can go online and you can see it by just saying customer journey Walt Disney on Google and you'll see this exact thing. Now, he had everything mapped out, merchandise, licensing, theatrical films, publications, comic strips, art corner shops, TV commercials, business films, music. And today, all of this is now in place from that one day before everything got in, put in place because he knew the customer journey of all the touch points that needed to be in place for his uh, business was so extremely important and that would help create an experience for sales to happen because the experience is what matters most when you have that sale when you have that customer touch point when you have um you know even in finance even when you make that sale that cha-ching um so that's what um that's what mattered to him and you now can experience that when you have that disney magic moment i know we all talk about that but that is what makes sense so why do you why do I care about human moments so much? It's because it, it's what makes that um, that matter most for mo for all of us. I, I would actually go out and venture to say that that's what matters for all of us. I talked about it at the very beginning. I was talking a lot around uh, the world really about this concept of there's no B2B or B2C. It's H to H, human to human. Um, that, that's what I, I'm here to my gift is to bring to the world about those human touch points. Um, I'm, I'm gonna ask you, you can put in the, the Q and A here and we're gonna have a little uh, fun with this because there are pillars that go into H to H and this will apply to your company. So let's have a little fun with this and how you can use this in your company. The first one is simplicity. Excuse me, how do you, how do you embrace simplicity? Um, in your company. So the first one I'm going to ask you is what company, and, and John, you can say this out loud since you've got a microphone, but what company embraces simplicity? You can put that in the, in the Q&A. I'd love to see what, what questions you have. Apple, I'm seeing Apple. That's a good one. Yeah, Apple is sim simple because we can see, that's a great one, uh, Elisa, I think is your name. Um, ho hopefully I'm saying that right. Steve, Amazon. So those are those are good ones because you can actually embrace Apple. You can go out and you can, you, you know, on two hands what, what they are selling. And you can get in there, you can order your product, you'll have it right away. It's really simple. They've done a great job. Now the next one is empathy. Empathy, who embraces empathy? What company embraces empathy? Well, what you know, I'm, I'm going to say with Satya leading Microsoft, I think that he personally emphasizes that. And I think he's transformed the company in many respects because of his vision of empathetic listening of the, the, com the customer's uh, journey and needs. I would agree with you. I think he's done uh, 360 on empathy. Um, and it 
was just a, a turnabout of exactly what you just said. Um, that's a, it's a great one. Um, you know, empathy might also be Amazon because they return everything without question. Uh, and for a large company like that, the second largest company on the planet, uh, next to Apple to be able to, or third actually next to Tesla, to be able to uh, do that without question at that scale is, is an empathetic uh, motion. And, so, and um, Zappos led that. Zappos is a great, yes, Zappos led, led that. That's a good point. Uh, the last one is imperfection. Who embraces imperfection? This is a hard one, but who embraces it? Not who is imperfect, because everybody's imperfect, but who embraces it? Brian Kramer. <laughs> See, so to, earlier today, we had a problem with slides. So we embraced imperfection. I, hopefully we, we, uh, we just let, we, we went with it. We had to, we just had to. So, but what company embraces imperfection? Boeing. <laughs> Who's that? I said Boeing. I was just. Oh, Boeing. Yeah. Uh, you know, another one is Dove. Um, Dove has, uh, you know, embraced soap for every type of skin. And if you look at their commercials, they've really embraced hum humanity for, for everyone. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's embracing uh, imperfection is like Tylenol back in the day, you know, when um, things happen, like, you know, the Oreo cookie thing, when that happened, embracing the imperfection of the lights going out in the stadium, like, you know, embracing the moment when things go wrong, like how do you, you know, use humor? in the moment uh, and, and just I, make, I, make fun of yourself. I think all embracing imperfection exposes your humanity, which enables people to more effectively connect with you. Amen, amen. And on that point, how do you then take some of that and then start to get yourself out into the world, right? In, in 1984, this guy, Crazy George, one of my favorite people who I actually just got to meet this last year for the first time I've been using him as an example and he was written into my book shareology and finally i got to meet him and he had me help do a um a, a, a wave in a stadium at the earthquakes game which was like the highlight of one of my one of my highlights of my life um and so uh he he started the wave in 1984 and the, for those of you who haven't done the wave if you haven't done the wave uh, put it into the Q and A. I'd love to know if you haven't done it. Uh, if you have done it, say yes in the in the chat. I'd love to know if you have done it. Um, and what it is is um, the wave is this simple little gesture of sitting down and standing up, sitting down and standing up, but doing it in the right moment when it matters. And and when you think about the wave, the wave in a stadium is all it is is it's modeling the way a disturbance travels through a medium. So think about that. It goes around the, the stadium um, and, it, and it takes one person, one person to start this thing. All it takes is one person. So that could be your company. That could be you to take a message into the medium. Into the medium is a smaller group of people or what we might call influencers. And then those influencers are those small group of people of 10 or 15 or 20 people that are influencers of that that. Uh, that idea or that concept that really believe in that thing, that smaller group that then take it to a larger group of people. And now all of a sudden we are excited. We have energy. We have this concept that wants to get out. And the energy of that thing now is up and down and up and down. And it goes through the stadium. Now it does take uh, time to go, to go up and down. Why? Because it took crazy George two years to get people to listen, to do this thing and act Two years, uh, it took two years, and from the two years he started it, it finally took off. And it went around the stadium more than once. It went around almost seven times. And on that day, it then two, two weeks later went to another stadium, and one week later to another stadium. And before you knew it, the wave became a wave at every stadium across the United States, and then it took off around the world. You see, it didn't just happen overnight. The wave became a wave because it took one person to actually influence a smaller group of people and then a bigger group of people. That's how it works with us in our businesses. And so we have to influence that, but we also have to understand that how we speak the language within our company is the language that gets out 
of our company, the language that we speak, the acronyms that we use, the wording that we use, the messaging that we use, this is what it looks like. This is the same thing that's used as Starbucks and McDonald's, but we, we make it so complex that it can get really hard. Like it goes from the traffic source to a lead magnet to a tripwire, which is with a tripwire, a core product or a profit maximizer, which is like your your uh, Big Mac or your uh, your your super size. Uh, or do you want to have the uh, the uh, super size it? And then do you want the the uh, the toy um, uh, Happy Meal? And then it goes into the follow up series and then over into the product market fit and then back into traffic source if you're not a fit. And so we make things so complex that all of a sudden the customer becomes less human, they become less connected to the company. And even as a small company, you don't wanna feel, make your company, your customers feel like this. Really what we want from everyone is to feel more organized and more human. This is how we want them to feel. This is what we want. This is my, um, you, can, you can screenshot this, you can keep it and, use it. Um, this is also how we teach people in our in our own uh, accelerator that we run. Um, and, and so I'll, I'm giving this to you, or if you want to talk more about this, I'm happy to talk about it. But quite frankly, it, it is about clarity, uh, community, and, um, and systems. And so what it is, is clarity uh, will help you define how do you want to speak to others? What is your mindset? Um, what does your brand platform uh, stand for? Where's the impact that you want to stand for? For me, my impact I'll talk about in a second is around um, humanity and, and, and making sure that you're clear with others and that standing out as humans is in a human to human approach is where it's at. Um, and then how do we identify our, our exact audience and being clear about that so that our employees and our, and our contractors and our partners can really be clear about how we're going to work together and then developing your irresistible offer. So you can say that in 30 seconds, not five minutes, and people understand how to connect back with you. And then finally leveraging, or not finally, but uh, understanding your community because community at the center is really the, the goal. It's the holy grail for how to build a business. You don't want to have to constantly work on selling people. You want to build relationships that last a lifetime. And that's how you build community through, um, through relationships and building and connecting others into community that then relate back to your core offer or your core, um, your core uh, audience that can even meet each other and thank you for introducing other people as, as a connector. Um, and, and then from there, you can work on your systems and structure. Why does that come last? Because it's a shiny penny for all of us. When we get into cash flow and business productivity and implementation plans and all of that stuff, it, it starts to weigh on us and it starts to create, um, it starts to create a, a, a burnout mode. Uh, you remember I burned out and I had to then let go in order to, to create more systems and structure, let go in order to create more. And so we, I suggest making it last and creating that from your brand platform, from your audience, from your irresistible offer, from those things, because then you have more definition around why you're creating more cash flow, why you're creating more sales, where are you creating it all from? And again, we can talk more about this in the Q&A. Now, there's three things I'm going to walk you through and I'm going to give you that is, is going to help you and your, uh, your company to uh, take right away in your approach that's going to help you. That's going to help you in your sales. That's going to help you in your, in your mindset and your immediate uh, outcomes. One is um, that we're going to talk about how do you present yourself, whether it's in sales or in uh, a relationship. When I ask you what you do, most of the time people say, hi, I'm Steve. Uh, you're gonna love this, um, John. Uh, they say, hi, I'm Steve. We are a CRM that helps companies connect with their customers. Now I know John doesn't say this. Um, I'm just saying that most of the time uh, companies will say something that bland um, and, and then go on for five minutes trying to say that's what they do. Now. Let me just turn the table on this. And I'd love for you all to, to maybe even play with that and say, what do you think in your mind? If I were to ask you what you do, what would you say? Because normally you would say what you do, 
but I'm going to push back on you. If you were to ask me what I do, I'd actually tell you I believe that being human is your competitive advantage. And you probably turn your head and go, wait, wait, what? Huh? How's that? Wait, tell me more. And then I would tell you that by standing out in the midst of all the uh, automation and the um, uh, AI and aug uh, augmented reality and, and virtual reality and bots and everything that's out there, especially with, with what we're going through in remote at a time like this when we're going through a pandemic, I believe that being human is your competitive advantage. That how often do you get a thank you note in the mail, a handwritten thank you note? Uh, how often do you get that in your mailbox? Being human is your competitive advantage to stand out. It's it's huge right now. And, and, and not only that, it actually can work inside your company and out. Now we can talk about the details and the meat of how to grow your business. That's how it works. That's how your impact can stand out and actually gain more clarity in conversations with others. And from there, let's meet. I wanna talk more, but I wanna help you. And let's not just do it in a conversation. Let's do it in what I wanna do in 90 minutes. I don't wanna spend 20 or 30 minutes helping you. I wanna do it in 90 minutes. And it's what I call the 10, 70, 10. It's where I'm, we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna spend 100% of the time in 90 minutes. And we're going to talk about you and I'm going to help you and I'm not going to sell you. And um, you're going to actually, you're going to have to ask me at the end if you want to know more. I won't ask you, um, but I'm going to coach you and we're going to learn more. We're going to deepen the relationship and um, I'm going to help you on one, two or three things that, it's, that I'm going to take everything that I have and give you everything that I've got. And we're gonna, we're gonna see what comes out of it. And I promise you, you're gonna walk away better. How's that sound? And then this is the model, 10, 70, 10. 10 minutes, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna focus on what they are um, wanting to learn, wanting to focus on, one, two, or three things. 70 minutes, you're gonna focus on what uh, those two, one, two, or three things are. You're gonna work with them, deepen that thing that you're, that you're, you're working on with them. And then in the last 10 minutes, what are one, two, or three things that you just took away from what we just talked about? This is a coaching model. And whether you're gonna be a coach or not, it doesn't matter. You're using what's called a, a deep listening model, all right? You're gonna listen intently on what they're doing because nobody listens anymore. There's, there's three li different level, levels of listening. Level one is that you're listening, but you're thinking, totally not listening to what they're saying. That's a level one. And maybe you're even doing that with me right now because I'm not on camera, or you're looking at other things on your computer, or you're looking at other things and you're sort of listening to me. Um, level two is that you're listening to me, but you're thinking about the next thing, or you're thinking about the next thing that you're gonna say in a, in a regular conversation. Um, and level three is you're totally listening. You're locked in on exactly what I'm saying. In fact, level three, this is how you do it. You repeat the words I'm saying in your mind as I'm saying it, and that's how you get into level three. And when you are in level three and you're doing the 10, 70, 10, you're gonna lock in a relationship because you're locked into what the other person is actually doing and being, and you're gonna create that relationship so that you can actually help them and walk away with a giving mentality, a serving mentality. And now you can actually say, how can I help you? How can I serve you? And finally, the third thing that I said I wanted to help you on is what does it look like uh, in a powerful question as you work through that? Now, don't just ask um, what's next for you. Ask powerful questions. What does it look like from 300 feet up, from 30,000 feet up? What's possible from here? What's next? Uh, or when, are, when you're, you're at your best, what's present? Or what do you need to be to accomplish this? Those are the questions that people will, will pull them out of their head and into their heart. It'll get them out of their space and create something so, so much more powerful so that they are ready to um, see something that they didn't see before. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close out here. I think we have some 
time for some Q&A, but I did want to end with some uh, some final thoughts. And that thought is, uh, one, uh, being human is your competitive advantage. Again, I'm going to say that again. Being human is your competitive advantage. So make sure that you are focused on human touch points throughout your your job, your business owner job of thinking through all those touch points in your sales, in your operations, in your uh, marketing, because it can get overwhelming. So just look at that, walk up to a whiteboard and map out all the different areas of what, what it is that already exists. And then take a step back and, and look at it and say, okay, where can I just pinpoint two or three human touch points, humor, human ways that I can address more customer human touch points. If you just did that, you will see a rise in sales, a rise in customer service, a rise in ways that people will go, wow, I never saw that coming. That'll be your Disney moment. And number two is embrace a, a coaching philosophy for deeper intimacy and conversations. Those powerful questions, that 10, 70, 10, or the approach in sales of spending more time with people and, and teaching these things to your team and so that you can scale more and not have to be there as much because the relationships that you teach and teach people to do so that you can scale and actually go on vacation and not have to check your email that's how it's done it's not um it's not done with you having to do it all that's how it's done um last thing i'll say is we do have a free business training that i'd love to offer you can go to hthgrowth.com it's going to give you all the, it's only 15 minutes and you can learn the exact business recipes. We've got way more detail in 15 minutes. Actually, we shortened it. So you don't have to sit through 45 minutes or an hour and you can grab that um, at h2hgrowth.com uh, and, 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 uh, and we're, uh, I'll give you a complimentary 45 minute strategy meeting with myself too, which, uh, which I'm just doing here for this group. And so, if you'd like to do that and take me up on it, I'd be delighted to do that with you and just work on your business. And and uh, and if you want to stretch it out to the 90 minutes um, and write a note in there that you, you'd like to do the 90 minutes, I'd be happy, more than happy to do that with you too. So um, there you go. And John, I'll, I'm going to take give the, the, the microphone back over to you. Thank you guys so, so much for, for uh, letting me do this. And apologies for the upfront thing, but I think we got our tech back on track and I appreciate being here. Brian, that was really great. It made me think about a lot of things. Um, it also reminded me of the time you sent the email with the mistake in it. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. So, I... so I'm gonna tell you a story around that and then I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story about your mistake and how it resonated with me. So I used to do, uh, we used to do direct mail back in the day in, at Goldmine because that, you know, people opened up things that you mailed them. And I did an experiment where I tested uh, a really pretty formatted, laser printed, Times Roman um, letter versus a trifold courier font with yellow highlighting and mistakes in the letter. Guess which one pulled better? I'm going to go with the, the other answer because I'm guessing it's Times Roman folded, but uh, what do you think? It was the courier with the yellow highlighting because it was more uh, human. It felt it felt like somebody actually wrote, typed it up and highlighted it. Wow. Right? So if you okay. want to stand out in this world, I think that at, if people can see that you're not a bot, right? We all get buried by these automated emails that are blasting us, that are sent by machines, that are they, they just don't feel human and i think what the thing that really resonates with me that you share is that if you could stand out by uh sharing with others what you believe and if what you believe not only resonates with them but they want to join your tribe that you could build a movement and i think that that's what we're all trying to do is build a, a movement around something that we believe in and get other people to believe with us and so when you said that what you believe in uh, about human your humanness uh, is your is your uh, competitive superpower, advantage. Your, your superpower your competitive advantage, I believe that um, that relationships are critical to life success, 
and that if you could help other people achieve their dreams at scale, you could achieve any dream that you want in life. Yes. And that's kind of what I've been doing uh, for uh, since yeah. the beginning of the time is because I struggle with building relationships at scale. You can't remember stuff and, and you just need help with all that stuff. Right. And But I, I'll tell you what, relationships, that creates a vibration when you connect with another human being in a, in a really, can, you know, in a really present way. And I think we feed on that. We, we, we get energy off of it. And so I, I love helping other people connect to achieve their dreams. So questions, now is a good time to ask questions. Uh, by the way, I put the Disney customer journey graphic in the chat window. Uh, it's, a, um, uh, uh, it's a really great graphic, thank you. Uh, I see one question, but it doesn't have anything to do with the webinar, but I'm going to answer it. When will Nimble integrate a native chat direct message feature? Um, so I'm not sure what you mean by that, Michael. I think what, what you might be saying is, are we going to integrate text uh, into Nimble? If that is the answer, if that's what you're asking, uh, that's definitely on our near-term roadmap to be able to uh, communicate and link. Uh, messages. Some of the APIs make it difficult, like the Apple APIs. Uh, you can't really do a lot of that stuff. But still, being able to build groups and send text is, uh, and and to be able to do interactive marketing with text, I think is a really important thing. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, and we, I'd love to get some questions for Brian. Uh, I don't see any yet. So Brian, why don't you give us a common question that people might have that you've heard uh, along the lines of your teachings that could help create some questions and thought processes from the people. And I'm gonna go on mute because you're gonna hear my wild dogs. I got four rescue dogs um, that oh, are yeah. going crazy. Yeah, um, you know, one of the common questions that I, that I get is, um, is how do I scale myself? I think you said it too. And how do you scale these these human uh, conversations? And um, and so um, uh, because there's only so much of us to go around. And uh, and so one of the things that I I believe in is uh, making sure that with each new uh, whether you call it a partner, a contractor, a um, hire. Um, a person that you're putting in place that it's intentional, um, that every person is intentional. Um, and you're, you're creating a, um, an onboarding format and a productivity um, format, um, a structure. Um, and, and this all equates to sales, right? Everything emanates out, outward. It's all from the inside out. Um, and people don't get this as much. I, I, I think that what we do is we, we businesses do business owners do one thing. Here's what they do. They get in the business uh, and, and they, they go into the house, the frame, the framed house, and then they put the furniture in and then they start selling that thing. Cause they're really good at it. They're really good at that one thing that they're good at. And then they start um, selling it a lot. And then they're like, Oh my God, I'm burning out. And then it's, it's hard to go back. And so what we need to do is we need to take a step back, just a tiny one, and look at the, the framework and start um, looking at the brand and looking at the, um, the, the impact that we want in the world and what is the impact you want in the world. And then looking at the processes and the structure a little bit and saying, okay, how can we get all of our employees or our contractors or everyone that is in our bubble, in our sphere, to really understand what we want our impact in the world to be and how are how are they communicating that to the world and how are we uh being our most productive selves and what does that process look like and what does that communication look like and and it, it doesn't have to be difficult it doesn't have to be sophisticated but it can be very um very uh, um uh, templated if you will and 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 human and when it's done and done well uh then from that point forward, it relieves you from having to be in it. It relieves you from having to exist inside the business. And now you can be more visionary and more purposeful and, and, and enjoy the thing you wanted and have more freedom. 
because that's why we get into business. We get into business to have more freedom. So focus on those things, though, focus on those areas of your, your impact statement, your, your impact, your structure, and your process. And, and your systems, uh, not because um, uh, not because you know that's where you want to spend your time, but because that's going to give you more time. Brian, I want to that that brings up a an, a, a, an analogy that I, that I think is really indicative of um, of empowering someone to really grow. I used to ride motorcycles at a place called Indian Dunes, which is out by Magic Mountain, and. Yeah. Uh, it was a really great place to ride motorcycles back in the day. And um, there was a part that was the desert in between the mountains where you could ride in the sand. And I don't know if you've ever ridden a motorcycle in the sand, but if you try to hold on to the handlebars too, too rigidly, the bike's going to fall. And what you have to do in order to ride a motorcycle through the sand is you have to sort of let go of the handles a little bit and let it float. The motorcycle will actually find its own way if you just let go enough to let the handlebars flow through the sand in their own natural motion. And when I started Goldmine, I did everything and I kept doing everything uh, and I felt like I could never leave the business. In fact, I did take a vacation for like, I don't know, three years or, or four years or whatever. And it was only after I hired great people, empowered them, and I let go, where I actually went to Europe for three weeks, which was really big, you know, leap for me, that they took over and the business started to just rocket ship grow. And so by, um, by stepping back and trusting in the people that, uh, in the team, is only is it really when the business started to accelerate? And I liken that to the lesson I learned from riding motorcycles in the sand. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It looks like we've got a last question. If we can take it, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um, if have time. Uh, uh, Jan Janice uh, here. Yeah, it looks like she said, "How does intention relate? Uh, what we believe to explain." Um, to what we do in business. Um, I'm not sure if I understand it completely, but I can attempt to uh, answer it. Um, uh, how does intention relate to think, what we I believe to explain? I think it's along the lines of what you're saying about that humanness is your superpower. And that belief translates into uh, how you explain what you do in your business. So she's saying, how does your intention relate on what you believe, how does, how does that relate to how you explain about your business? Okay, um, well, so one thing is that in, intention is, um, relieves the pressure of, um, of a goal. Um, we, can, we, we, we mix up our goals and our intentions. So when we do like a goal, like we come out of New Year's and we set a goal for the year, I don't believe in that. Um, but what I do do is set an intention for the year. Um, or intentions, and I set those for the for the business as well. Um, we we have three businesses. I set intentions with the teams and say this is what we're gonna our, our intentions. What do you think? And then we we go, and then we we constantly week over. We have tools to measure the intentions, and then we shift make shifts based upon those intentions. And that way, when we're surprised by uh, by them, then we can we can take a step back and and reorient ourselves. We just use it as a compass rather than as a goal. Um, but an intention is um, how do um, we want to achieve? I'm just making this up, but we want to achieve. Our intention is to achieve 30% uh, um, more than last year um, in in uh, revenue um, and or more. Um, and that way we, we can create from there. Um, now, um, what, what, uh, how do you explain that with what we do with our business? Um, you can, you can create intentions around anything. You can do it short term, medium or long term. And, and actually one of the things that you can also create from intentions is, um, is what's called a stake. Um, I didn't cover this, but steaks are wonderful. And it's not a steak that you eat. It's a S-T-A-K-E. 
Um, my wife and I create stakes all the time and they're short term. The stake is around a deadline and we do it as a team. Um, when we, ha we have uh, now, um, I don't know, seven or eight people and we'll create a, a stake around like a deadline that's coming up. And the stake is a short statement that you can create like, um, uh, you know, if we have a webinar that we're putting together or we have a, um, a, a class or a workshop that we're giving or um, something like that, then uh, or even Courtney and I, if we're moving, we moved like two and a half years ago uh, and we're, we know that as a couple, we may, you know, have some speed bumps in the in the move move together. Like we, we said, it, we're we're going to move with ease and, and flow. And every time something came up, our stake is, um, you know, oh shoot we didn't get that done well oh well we're moving with ease and flow and so that was our theme for the move and so everything that we do now is with ease and flow so you can combine a stake with intention and now all of a sudden it, it just alleviates everything so our intention is to grow 30 percent, but what's our stake and now all of a sudden it, it just kind of lessens the pressure right so that's that's how you do it Awesome. Uh, Brian, I think that's it for the questions. Uh, can you um, tell people how to get a hold of you or the, just show the next step thing? I think it was the uh, H2H URL. What was that? Yeah, it's H, number two hgrowth.com and you'll get the video and, and then a complimentary uh, strategy meeting with myself. Uh, and I'd love to meet you and talk with you about your business and do exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, or you can just reach out if you want and you can email me. It's right here, brian at briankramer.com or that's my email, that's my website, briankramer.com and you can sign up for my newsletter. It's a packed newsletter. Uh, it goes out once a week and, and you get free $5 in USD human coin um, just by signing up. So that's kind of cool. You, uh, it's actual, you know, actual real money. So that's kind of cool too. Awesome. Brian, thank you so much. We will be sending out the recording to everybody that attended and registered. And uh, and Brian, I uh, appreciate you uh, in so many ways. Thank you for sharing the, your inspiration today. Thank you, my friend. I, I totally loved it and love you and I'm honored. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.